Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, fam. We're back. Got an exciting story for y'all today. And I'm going to keep dude's name out of it. Dude's still locked up. He's ever coming home. So we're just going to call him Didi. Now, this story revolves around a couple different things. What happens if you lose a fight to a boy? If you've been watching my channel, then you know what a boy is. If you don't, let me refresh you. A boy is a man that identifies as a female in prison or a man that likes other men and takes the female role. We got a lot of names, boys, punks, gumps, sissies, and the list goes on and on. Me personally, I don't care what you do. Don't come at me sideways and we're gonna be just fine. Now we can't bunk together. We can't sell up together because that's a bad look to everybody else. They're gonna be whispering and I can't have that. Plus, I can't have you sneaking your man in here. And I always get the bottom bunk. So if you have somebody come in here, y'all going to be on my bunk. I can't have all the other boys at the cell. Like, all the way around the board, it's a bad look. But what happens if you lose a fight to a boy? Now, let me explain something to you before we even begin today's stories. Some of the boys can fight. You think because he talks like a girl, acts like a girl, that he can't get down. When the truth of the matter is, he's been dealing with this since the moment he came out. You think you got you got somebody soft to pick on? That dude has been being picked on since the moment that he came out the closet. Since the moment he decided to start dressing different, talking different, acting different, people started bullying him. People started talking behind his back, started looking at him different, making comments to it. He's already fought behind this. And if he's in prison, he's done fought more than once behind this. It's a good chance he's fought more than you. Because he's got a reason to get picked on right out the gate. A lot of these dudes think, just because they act like a girl, that that's not still a whole entire man. I've seen some dudes that you didn't want no wreck with. That talked with a little squeaky voice like a girl. That wore tight jeans. That would take you in that cell. Whack them all, you rock. <laughs> Rock em, sock em, robot. Yeah, <laughs> you beat you and just do what they want with you. Which is kind of what happened in today's story. But losing a fight to a boy, picking on a boy, going in that cell and running that fade with that boy, and losing. What happens next? Didi. Didi had a reputation that was bigger than he was. Everybody talked about him, they knew about him. Dudes that I had around me had been locked up a long time. They had been on other compounds with him, up in the mountains with him, on supermaxes. Like, this dude made a name for himself. Now, he's a big man. A big man. We're talking 275, 280 plus. 6162. But acts like a girl. And dudes think that just based on that, that he's something sweet. He might have been sweet in the way he talked. Might have been sweet in the way he walked. But it wasn't nothing sweet about it when it comes to wrecking. Without further ado, man, you know how to see it. You know how to live it. So let's relive it. Let's keep it all the way 100. When I got to prison, I was beyond homophobic. I didn't come from a lifestyle where there was like gay people around me. I had that one incident where I went to that club that time and got into it with old Nick Nolte. But in my everyday life, there wasn't anybody like that that hung around. Now, I hung around chicks that was into chicks because, as we know, that's always been acceptable. You, just, you know where the double standard comes in, right? Like with two guys, it's like, oh, what y'all doing? But two girls, it's like, hey, what's going on? Try, try to make a sandwich? Like, me slide up in there. That's always been more acceptable, right? But I didn't hang around any dudes on the streets that live that type of life. I didn't know any dudes on the streets that live that type of life. You get to prison... Take all that and throw that out the window. I don't care what you like, what you dislike, what you think you're going to deal with, what you're not going to deal with. You're going to come to terms with it because it's all around you. You're going to see it. You're going to hear it. Sometimes you're going to smell it. You're going to deal with things that are going to make you uncomfortable. But as time passes, you're going to come to realize something. They're not going to come at you like that. Now, you do got some psychos. Like You got some psychos that will try to turn a straight man out. Been done. Seen it. You got some bandits that'll turn a straight man out. You got some boys, some boys that'll try to turn a straight man out. For the most part, 
It's not really a thing. They go after guys that they know are looking to be with them. Didi, as I told y'all, is a big, 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 big ass man. Now you would think that based off his size, if you're smaller than him, you wouldn't want to run your mouth. He's never going home. He's taking a life. He is in here forever. This is his home. And you, just passing through. Your best bet is to just do your time, leave him alone, and get up out the door. When Diddy first came in the pod, he got to wrecking. He got to rumbling with a couple of different boys. The boys seeing the way that men looked at him, overheard boys, the other men talking about him. And why dudes would want to be with somebody that big? I don't get it. It's like being the average size man, 5'9", five, 5'10", five, and wanting to be with China. You know what I mean? Or wanting to be with, like, just a big Brock Lesnar of a female. But dudes, I guess, like, hearing stories about D.D. and, my D.D., da, 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 like, other guys getting in the details that had messed with D.D. in the past, started to pique their interest. What? It's like that? Now, we hear this, this series of rumors going around and what he's done and the relationships he's been in. And we've also heard that in some of his relationships, he's beat his boyfriends up. Like, punish them. Like, a cell door closed, they get a domestic dispute going, and Dee Dee don't come out the cell with no, no bruises on and no black eyes. Now, he ain't coming out the victim. He's coming out with them big-ass knuckles all knotted up and swollen up and teeth marks in them. So the boys tried Dee Dee when they first got in there. Tried to jump Dee Dee, come to the door, run in their mouth, and he was like, whoever wants can get it. Y'all come get it. First one through the door, I'm a trash. So they tried to push through the door real fast, and Dee Dee versus three, Dee Dee came out on top. Yelled out to the other boy that didn't come in the cell. Hey, come get this up out my cell, man. Big man. Didi's got a dude that lives in the cell next to him that is kind of similar to what I was in the beginning. He was homophobic. He didn't know no better. He hadn't been in there long. This is a big-ass white dude, right? Didi would just say things to him. He'd walk by him, and their cells are right next door. How you doing? And dude would just, like, don't speak to me. Just rude. Just, there was no need for that. Hey, what's up? Keep it moving. You know, you, that you can do that. That's acceptable. Well, it got to a point where I guess Didi started to feel some type of way. You could see, like, the dude staring at him and the dude snickering about him and whispering about him. So Didi walks by one day and says something to the dude, and the dude don't say nothing back. And Didi said, well, fuck you then. At which point, dude told him, man, take care of your digging the booty ass on somewhere. Like, he starts getting greasy out of his mouth, getting disrespectful. Didi's cellmate was another big dude, but wasn't. He was an old school dude that just did his time. He did a lot of dope. Stayed out the way, but he was a convict. You know what I mean? I'm not, I can't say if he messed with boys. I never seen him mess with boys. But what I do know is he messed with them knives. What I do know is he had been in some some spots that you didn't want to be in. That he had made a name for himself. So Didi's about to go next door and beat this big white dude up. And then somebody comes and stops him. No, 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 no. Like, I've got too much stuff in the cell. If you do that to him. They're going to come in here. They're going to shake this cell down. They're going to find this, 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 this. Phone, knife, drugs. Like, I'm going to jail. And I don't want to go to jail. I like being out in population, making my moves, making my money, doing what I do, not being locked up in a hole because you got to fight. No, I'm not going to let it happen. So Didi's cellmate intervening was the only thing that stopped their fight from happening in that day, right? Meanwhile, time's got to go on. They still celled up right next to each other. The tension builds, the aggression builds. And this dude had a habit of standing in his doorway, not coming out and just sitting down with people, hanging out with people, playing cards, sitting on the benches. Nah, he liked to stand in his doorway, big, just jacked up white dude, smoke his cigarettes and just stare at people. Just kind of being nosy. He's like that neighbor that peeks out the blinds, but instead of being blinds, he's got the blinds all the way up staring out the window. This dude would just stand in the door and stare around. Didi's out there with the other boys. Now after Didi whooped the boys, he come to be friends with the boys. Very common happens. Rat, get it out the way. Now everybody's cool. Now you're in the squad. It's kind of like a, I don't know if it's an initiation or just respect my authority. We respect my authority. But whatever you want to call it, he becomes cool with the boys. Didi's out there and the boys, hey, if you're a boy and you're watching, don't take it the wrong way. They do the most. They do the most. Very loud, obnoxious at times. Overly loud Talking about things that other guys ain't trying to hear Like saying things that make other guys feel uneasy We don't want to hear what happens when ain't nobody around And what you and him was doing and what you was doing We don't want to hear that But this is what him and these other boys are out there doing You got the big old white dude standing in the doorway 
Now he's standing there looking at them, and they're right in front of his cell. He's on the top tier, right in front of his cell. There's all these tables on the bottom tier, and these boys are talking, and the things they are saying, it is bothering, it is troubling. But you learn to block things out. You learn that if it ain't your business, stay out of it. Who cares what they're saying? You go over there, you're gonna cause yourself some unnecessary problems. But these boys are out there and they're saying some some sexual things that each of them have done and been through and you see like other inmates clearing that area because nobody trying to hear that the big dude in the cell comes out to the rail mind you he's on the top tier they are not in front of his cell they are down in the day room y'all take that shit on somewhere else ain't nobody trying to hear all that ass shit like care that shit on somewhere else oh dick booty he always used to say dick and the ass dudes that's his favorite line right oh dick and the ass dudes y'all carry that on somewhere else man all that gay talk talking this talking that right well now you haven't just offended Didi, who already wanted to beat you up and at this point it's like i don't know i guess about 2 33 o'clock you got a lot of dudes are outside of wreck dd cellmate's not in there to stop anything so now you haven't just offended Didi. Dee Dee. You've offended little mama, you've offended... There's like three, four other boys standing out there. Little mama claim to be like a golden glove boxer. There's, there's so much that goes into this, right? At which point, the boys are going to turn up. They're going to do the most. What you say? What? And you hear the sweetness leave their voice, and you hear the bass drop. What'd you say? Like, everybody's voice starts changing. It's crazy. Now come up there and smash your... Hey, dude continues to run his mouth. The boys take off, Dee Dee takes off, and Dee Dee tells the boys, no, 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 no. He's had this coming, I got him. So Dee Dee goes up there, and the officer's in the control booth. Now you've got two sides of the control booth. This officer's responsible for watching this unit and this unit. If she turns her head to the left, you've got 86 men over here and 43 cells. Then there's a wall down the middle. If she turns her head to the right, there's 43 cells over here with 86 men. She is responsible for watching 172 men and 86 cells total, right? Diddy goes up top of the staircase, and you can see the officer. If you're a convict, you know to just watch where her head goes. And once her head pays attention to the other side, or somebody comes up in control of NASM, that's when you can do whatever you're going to do. Diddy walks down there. He's not acting all crazy. He's not getting all hype. And he's asking, dude, what well, you want to do this? you are selling myself. Dude tells him, I'm going to do whatever. We can do it right here. I don't care nothing about that. Like, he's trying to be calm to not draw the officer's attention. If you get hype, officer's going to look. Whatever you had going on, you're going to get caught. They're going to come running in and catch you in the midst of whatever you got going on. Guard turns her head, starts talking to somebody, and Didi says, what do you want to do this? Before Duke can answer, Didi grabs him by his throat and rushes him in the cell. Now, I don't see the fight. I overhear the fight. I'm on the phone. The, the phone is only coming like straight line of view, which you can see up in there. If I'd have stood all the way up, which I don't do because that's going to draw attention. The officer's going to see me standing up, staring in that cell like a chicken hawk, and she's going to want to see... Why is Jay staring over there? That's called drawing. She's going to look. I'm going to get dudes to off. So I'm sitting on the phone talking. I say, oh, these dudes about to get to fight. They're about to get to rumbling. And I just kind of glance my head up. And I see Didi grab dude by the throat and rush him in. And dude's trying to swing. But Didi is up close on him, choking him. And that's when you hear him just go to rumbling. You hear the, the skirt skirts of the sneakers. The, the sound, the impact of fist versus flesh. The grunts, the body blows. And you hear these two dudes in there trading punches. And then you're a slam. Boom! The officer stops in the booth, looks around. But we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. We're not staring in that direction. Nobody's up there. She can't tell where the noise came from. She looks around, don't see no disturbance. She goes back to what she's doing. But after that slam, it got quiet. Maybe two, three minutes passes after that. Dee Dee comes out the cell. No sign of the big white dude. Dee Dee says, who's the dick and booty ass dude now, huh? Huh? He's yelling this. I'm waiting for this dude to come back out the door swinging. This dude is up there unconscious. Come to find out, Dee Dee choked him out. They went to the ground. That's what Dee Dee grabbed him, slammed him. That was the boom we heard. And then he wrapped up behind him and held him and put his ass to sleep. Dee Dee comes out the cell, goes back down there with the boys. Got a couple little bruises on him. The boys tell him, I'll come to the cell. You got to clean yourself up. I'm good. Don't worry about it. They get him a shirt. He changes his shirt. A little bit of blood on his shirt. Strip. Change his shirt. Goes back to his conversation. It would be a couple minutes when dude stumbles up, comes to the door. I look up, and this dude is standing in the doorway, and he is disoriented. He is nodded. He's got a goose egg on the side of his head where Dee Dee's done slammed him. You know, and you can see the look of confusion in his face. Like, you don't know if it's because he just got knocked out. I didn't know what was going on, Tom. I just knew that 
The look he had on his face was not the look of, I just lost a fight. It was a look of fear. It was a look of confusion. It was dazed. It was, I don't know what's going on. Something happened. Just in the look, I knew that this was different. The dude shuts his door. It's a pillow in the door. There's a slot in the door that's perfect for a pillow to fit in. That's the only way you see out. It's not bars. These are solid metal doors with a slot big enough to put a pillow in, and that gives you your privacy. So the dude comes to the door, and he stands around looking for a minute. Diddy's standing there looking up at him after he's done trashed him. The other boy's snicking and laughing, but they've gone back to their conversation. He didn't run nothing but his mouth. Diddy went up in there and handled his business. I've told you everybody's out of wreck, so a lot of guys didn't see this. The dude shuts his door, and it wouldn't be but two, three minutes later, he comes out the cell, and he's got a towel wrapped in his hand. Now, we know that inside that towel, there is something. You don't know what it might be. It could be a lock. It could be any form of weapon, but he's got something inside that towel. He comes down the staircase, starts making his way towards the, you know, where Dee Dee and the boys are, and the boys aren't going to let him do whatever he's got planned on doing. And he gets to arguing. What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? And Diddy tells him, who's in the booty ass now, huh? Who's dick in the booty ass now, huh? What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? Like, dude is spazzing out, like, trying to ask the dude, like, well, what did you do? And he's got this towel in his hand, right? When the boys runs up and punches dude from the side, boom, he drops the towel, a shampoo bottle falls out. He didn't have a knife. He didn't have a weapon. He tried to he tried to throw 52 fake out on him, make it look like he had a weapon, but he had a damn shampoo bottle, a VO5 shampoo bottle wrapped up in a towel, right? He didn't have no weapon. After he dropped it, the boy, hey, he got all the guys a shampoo bottle. He's rocked. He don't want no more smoke. But he's asking, dude, Didi, what did you do? And Didi told him, how did you like it? Let me know how you like it. Maybe you liked it, huh? Maybe you liked it, huh? Everybody comes back in from wreck. White dude's got an older dude for a celly, so he's just kind of looking at the cell. What did y'all do? What the hell happened in here? Look like two Tasmanian devils had the ring of death going on in here. Like, the hell's going on in the cell? And Diddy's cellmate calls Diddy upstairs. Diddy goes up there and talks with him, comes back down, and that's when the rumors start. That's when Diddy starts telling other dudes what he did. Big white dude comes down with all his stuff packed. Everybody's coming in from wreck. Now it's about 3, 30, 4 o'clock, wreck is ending. Big white dude has done put all his stuff, bagged it all up, and went to the control booth and told them, I need to be moved. Well, you can't be moved. We ain't got no best to put you in. Then I need to go to the hole. What, ha what happened to your face? What's wrong? Nothing, man. I need to go to the hole. He knows everybody in here is going to clown him because you just got whooped by the boy. I don't care how big the boy is. It can be a little person all the way up to 10 feet tall. Golden rule is you better not lose that fight to the boy. Not only did he lose the fight, but something else happened that we're going to get into. He tells the officer, I need to be taken up out of here. Not moving you. And he says the words that they have to respond to. I fear for my life. The biggest problem here is as he knows that it's not going to be long. Everybody here is going to hear what happened. And he can't be in here no more. Because we're going to joke him. We're going to clown him. We're going to laugh at him. We're going to shut him. Sergeant comes down. What's going on? Sergeant goes up. Looks in the cell. He can tell there's been a fight in there. You can see the boot scuff marks all over the floor. And different signs of a struggle in the cell. And he asks. Who was involved in it? Dude's not saying anything. Dude tells him, I fear for my life. I need to go to the hole. So they take him up out of there. They don't lock us down. Nobody's stabbed. But no sooner than he leaves, Diddy tells everybody, after I choked him out, I pulled his pants down and I stuck my fingers in his ass. Let me say that again. After Diddy choked the dude out, he pulled his pants down and stuck them big... <laughs> Polish sausage, corn dog, like dude had these big ass fingers with these big ass knuckles. I don't know if it was one, he said fingers. Two, three, four, what? But after he choked him out, he reached down there and checked his oil, checked his fluids, checked his temperature, went up in his prison pocket, went up in his prison purse, put something in his man wallet. Yeah, he didn't know. Uh, he didn't bump and grind. He didn't get his R. Kelly on, nah. But I guess he wanted to show him what it felt like to be called Mr. D in the booty. So not only did he beat him up, this is a big dude. That's why I told y'all that size stuff a lot of times. 
Diddy was a big dude, but he wasn't jacked up. This dude was jacked up. I mean, like, got the muscles on top of the neck where muscles ain't supposed to be in veins and places where veins ain't supposed to be. One of those dudes. And Diddy was just a big, I don't want to say sloppy body, but sloppy body dude that was really strong that had been fighting his whole life, that had been gay for a long time and had been through a whole lot of fights behind being gay. That would be the talk of the pod for about the next week. Didi got into so many different things after that. I could do a chapter on Didi. But that would be the talk for the next, you know, couple of weeks, man. You better leave Didi alone. Didi will go up in that ass. Didi will dig up in that ass for real. I don't know where dude went, but I can promise you this. This is not Vegas. Now, they say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I can promise you this. Wherever he went, it followed him. The things you go through in prison are 100% going to follow you from compound to compound. You think that it's over. It's not over. Dudes are going to talk about it for the longest time. If you're known for knocking dudes out, when you walk in the pod, dudes are going to say, hey, he's a knockout artist. But all you got to do is lose one fight. Lose one. And that's going to be what dudes talk about. Remember when I told you the boys got Didi another shirt? When he beat the big dude up, the big white dude, the white dude came out, he had knots all over him. Bruises, you know, that different shades of, of color from where his face was knotted up. But he wasn't leaking. There wasn't no blood on his face. No blood on his head. But Didi had blood on his shirt. The blood on his shirt came from when he cleaned his fingers. And Didi used to have these long nails. Like it was disgusting. He had these big, thick, long nails. Natural nails that he had grown out. And I guess when he checked dude's temperature, when he checked dude's oil with them fingernails, either them fingernails or them fingers, I must guess it was a combination of both. Cut him. And then Diddy took his fingers and wiped it off on his shirt. It's a bad, bad day to be that guy. Now, I know the guy's name, but I didn't put the guy's name in the story just because of the sensitive nature of the subject. Might have a family member watching. You never know. That's 100% a true story and 100% what D.D. did to old boy. I watched D.D. wreck time and time and time again. D.D.'s cell partner, which he, he eventually got out the cell with the one dude, the one dude he was in the cell with, got caught coming in the building with a knife and got transferred. They ended up putting a dude in the cell with D.D. that D.D got involved in a relationship with. The other night, one night, they have a domestic dispute. It's real quiet in the pod. DD trashes dude like he had done, you know, plenty of dudes before. The guard in the control booth hears it, figures out where it's coming from, sees the light in the cell on, calls the officers in there. They go there. There's an active fight taking place. DD goes to the hole. His cell partner goes to the hole. And I didn't see DD no more. But if you lose a fight to a boy, expect to be the laughing stock of the penitentiary. Expect to be the butt of the joke. Expect to be carried, laughed at, clowned on by everybody around you. Number one, you have started a fight with a gay man. So you're automatically expected to win. Not all gay guys fight like females. Not all gay guys throw windmill punches and, you know, act like females. No. No matter how you want to chop it up, how you want to dissect it, how you want to look at it, that is still a man. That's still a man. I'm a boy! <laughs> and everybody else looks at you, especially when you're the aggressor. Oh, you better come out on top. Dudes will shun you. And dudes you used to kick it with will stop talking to you. I know that if you do that, and you're my homeboy, I know you can call me what you want. Traitor, unloyal. If you call a gay dude out, and you go up in there and you get whooped. The rules pretty much state I have to fall back from you. Because you know what's going to happen? You're going to start laughing at me too. When people describe you, now you know the dude that got beat up and got the fingers put in his, yeah, Jay's homeboy. Now you're not Jay nothing. Now dude's going to want to try me. They're going to put me in the category of soft because you got whooped. There's a lesson to everything. There's a moral to every story. And the moral of this story is never judge a book by its cover. I don't care if it's a little guy, skinny guy, fat guy, bald guy, guy with dreads. I don't care what he looks like. You do not judge somebody based on their sexual preference. 
You don't think that automatically just because he likes men that you can whoop him. You don't know what his background is. You don't know his story. You don't know what he's been through. You don't know what he's capable of. You don't know who you about to go in that cell with. And the crazy part is with the big white dude, after all that happened, I heard another dude starting like, man, I'm shocked. Like, I was at, he did this and like, and receiving, he whooped this dude and like he had made a little name for himself, but he was the new guy in our pod. His name wasn't really like that. And he ran up against the wrong one, huh? I can promise you that it shaped the way he looked at those type of dudes. And that moving forward, he thought twice before he went calling dudes out. He should have never came out of a cell and put himself in that situation to begin with. The moment he walked out there and opened his mouth and told them dudes what to do with their time, how to do their time, how to do their bid, he opened that door to that ass whooping and to getting to a taste of uh, what Didi enjoyed. What became his nightmare was something that Didi did for fun. Was something that Didi got pleasure from. He had to really put in some work after that to shake that. But no matter what, that lesson always followed him. That fight right there, I don't care if he won the next 130 fights in a row and every one of them was a knockout. What DD did in that cell to him would ultimately be his legacy. I can promise you he never came home and told nobody about that. His happiest day of his life was when he left prison and didn't have to be known as the dude that got choked out in the cell and violated by some big old fingers. Live your best life, people. Leave people alone. What that man does ain't got nothing to do with you. Putting your nose where it don't belong will get it broke. Running your mouth to people will get it broke. Go in, do your time, and come out. A lot of this can be avoided. But guys just feel the need to be disrespectful. Feel the need to poke their chest out. Feel the need to judge the next man not knowing what they're doing. I guess he looked at him like he's big for nothing. Yeah, he's big, but he's gay. So he must be soft just on the fact that he's gay. I know I can whoop him. Yeah. It always ends bad. That's the story of Didi and his monstrous fingers, his knockout, and his uh his need to explore places that had never been explored before. You are not in prison anymore, David. Anyways, these jails, these prisons, these penitentiaries, these plus size DDs. <laughs> They're all just crazy worlds inside of a already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams Let's Live Life. And to all my real ones, and there are some real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Man, y'all know how we do. Salute. Leave people alone. Do not judge a book by its cover. Lesson.